we came into this going, we won because we're here. Right. And I truly believe we won because we're here. Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are two, two crazy, crazy campers. campers. And after losing a combined weight of more than 200 pounds, we realized we had so much more energy for activities. Come along with us as we explore the great outdoors. And join us on a brand new adventure. Welcome to week four, or just episode four, behind the scenes for RV Unplugged season two. What do you think so far, Joe? Because we're watching all of these episodes in live time, just like everybody else. We've never seen this footage before before there's like a wealth of emotion going through me so on the one hand it's really cool to relive these positive moments like you last week with the axe like that was exciting i've watched it probably 50 times this week because it brings me so much joy to watch you do that thanks but then on the other side i'm reliving how hard this game was Truly. emotionally and it's bringing back the whole idea like do people not like us mm. like being on a team you know, all of that kind of stuff. So, like, it's a positive but also a negative thing. There's definitely two sides to it. I am finding the hardest thing while watching is the heart palpitations and, like, the sweaty armpits as I kind of relive the moment where the contest, the game is going on, and you're trying to bring your all to it, but you're really worried if you have enough. And yes, I do have to relive not just the ax throwing, which was awesome, but also the soccer kicking, where I didn't even score at all and didn't help the team in any way, shape, or form. So you guys have all seen, hopefully you've seen the episode four. Uh, I'll leave a link for it up here if you haven't seen it. I would go watch that first because there's going to be spoilers in here if you watch this first. So if you've seen that, you know that the result of the axe throwing was we have a vote off. We go to the vote off and now there's scrolls presented. Right. Two scrolls. And the odds of it happening was that the, the vote off scroll, there's no vote off scroll. As Todd said, we're going to get picked. It happened. It happened so again. we didn't have a vote off for the third day in a row, which is great because we got to spend a lot of time with people. Yes. But I was a little disappointed because you worked so hard. And, and I guess it gave us a little taste of the week before. Right. The blue team. But then we had it the week before that, you know. So it, it's – I it would have been nice to have had a vote off there. So that kind of stunk. But it was still like – an amazing moment for you. What did you think about the fact that you did all that and didn't have a vote off? I was so thankful that I experienced that personal win and I felt like, you know, going forward, even though it didn't result in us uh, being able to have blue team at sort of a disadvantage going into the next thing with with one team down it didn't do anything as far as reducing the the powerhouse that is the the blue team in any way however i felt like i demonstrated to myself and to my team that it could be a valuable uh, player even under pressure and i feel like that's the the added layer that's so important because whatever we do we have to do it in a crunch, a pressure crunch of some sort, whether it is time or, you know, it has to do with how much you're lifting or picking up or doing. I mean, there's a crunch to it. Okay, so putting under pressure. Under pressure. Before we show the behind the scenes from this week, I just thought of something. Yeah. Let's say you were on the blue team. Okay. Okay, in that situation last week, and there was a vote off. Like, they did not get to skate by with no vote off. Yes. Okay. Who would you have voted off? I'm curious, Ooh. like, down in the comments, put, do you vote off your strongest player first? Mm -hmm. Or do you vote off someone who's a weak player so that you can keep your team strong? Remember, this is the first vote on your team. This is not towards the end. So you got five teams. You're going to go down to four on your side. 
Who would you have voted off had you been on the blue? We'll act like you were your own team and I was at my own team. And because obviously we would have had to have this discussion. Right. Again. But who would you have wanted to vote if off? If it went to a If it went to if a If you vote, were on the team, who would you have voted off from the blue team that you're, week? You're talking about following the axe throwing. Following the axe throwing. They, if, let's say they would have had to vote somebody off. Who would you have voted off? Gosh, I don't know. At this point, if you're going to vote off. Especially after having the results of the axe throwing. If the thought is, who am I afraid to face at the end? No, I just wanna know, who would you, in that moment, who were you voting off? Gosh, I don't know. I feel like I would have, based on the previous weeks, I feel like Kevin and Tabitha and Aaron and Archer are really strong competitors. But so you would not keep the strongest player to help your team further along over the red team? I don't know because I, you know what it is? I see myself as a weaker vessel, which is not good. That's not a good attitude. So I think of in terms of if somebody is a really strong contender, they don't see necessarily the benefit of keeping me. Like they can do what they need to do without see, me. See, I'm on the complete opposite. Okay. So who are you voting? Give me a name. You I, gotta give me a name. Don't throw. They, Don't be afraid. Throw me out a name. Who are you getting off? It doesn't matter. The game's over. You're not going to offend them. I'm going to say probably Aaron and Archer because because you think they're too strong. Aaron is just so freaking athletic. Okay, so here's what I would have done. Okay, this would have been an interest. We would have ended up in the same place, but for different reasons. All right, we would have voted as a team. I would have voted off Aaron and Archer. Oh, okay. Why? But not because he was strong. Why? I, because again, for me, I would have wanted to keep the blue team strong and they don't want to get, they're going to take me further along, right? So let if you have that team, they're going to look at me as I'm weak because you've got Aaron and Archer and you've got, you know, Kevin and Tabitha, you know, everybody on that team was strong. Jackie Jack and Shelby. Shelby, everybody on the team was strong. So keep the weak player, let them pick off the strong, but they're going to keep me because they're going to think they can beat me when you get down to final three right. on each side, right? I would have gotten rid of Aaron and Archer for the sole reason that a lot of people felt that the fact that you had Aaron and a mm. dog was a detriment. Okay, because- Because they didn't have that. And again, I'm basing it on what you had last week. So if I was in that situation, yes, Aaron was a strong competitor, but also he did have the detriment of not having a partner. Right. So I probably would have wanted to get rid of Nair because that would, again, keep my team strong. But That's in that good. way, it would have been a double-edged sword, right? You would have kept our team strong, but also eliminated a strong player for later on. But fortunately for the blue, never came to that. Nobody had to decide who they were going to vote for that week. So now we're going into day four. So let's play the behind the scenes. Let's do it. We oh, did it. Oh, people for the win. We did it. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe it. And you ran. I ran. I'm I almost, so proud of you. I almost died. You and ran. You, and you were like, let's hold hands. And I was like, screw you. I don't want to hold your hand. But then I was glad I did because we almost went through a campsite. You did. Which would have disqualified us. It would have disqualified us. us. So here's the thing. Whether you want to or not, hold your partner's hand today. You don't know what you're going to save them from or they're going to save you from. So it suddenly occurred to us that maybe you'd like to see a close-up of what the key token looks like. So winning the challenge today, this is what the key token looks like. And this is going to open the door to the key room. Now, I, I'm going to be honest. I'm nervous about this token. We've talked about it in a couple of the other diaries. Is this a target? Um, but... I feel like this token is putting a target on our back. And the thing is, is that now people on our team are gonna wanna know what happened in that room. So if we go in that room, from what we understand, there's a couple of different things that can happen. There could be a chest that provides our team something. There could be a chest that gives us possible immunity or some other reward, or there could be a chest that's empty. And I feel like this is a lose-lose win situation. If there's a team thing, it's a winning situation. If there's something that gives us an advantage, it can help us, but also it's gonna be a target on our back because we wanna play with integrity. So we don't wanna come out and say we didn't get anything. So now we have to tell them what we got, which means there's a target on our back. Or we can come out and say we didn't get anything. If we didn't, that nobody's gonna believe us. Well, and even if we didn't get something, like if there is an nobody's empty gonna chest, believe us. no one's gonna believe us. So my- we have an idea. So my idea is I'm going to ask 
if we can bring our entire team into the key ceremony. Or at least a couple of members of our team. It is not going to affect anything. Like it's it, because I just want to have somebody have eyes on us showing that we are totally honest in what we got, what we found in that chest. And our feeling is if they say no, we are going to ask in front of our other teammates so that at least they know what we want to do. <sighs> I still can't believe we won. I cannot believe we won. Our keto brains were working hard today. Yeah, we definitely needed the focus. Now here's the thing. There were actually two challenges going on today. And I, I mean, we were talking with Stacy yesterday about how much I used to always watch Amazing Race. Now we don't have television anymore. like regular cable so I don't watch right. it but I used to and, and Phil and Stacey love Amazing Race but this was like the Amazing Race right down to the finish when Todd made me kick my shoes off like I you're not on the winning mat it was awesome but the thing was is there was another challenge going on where there was a Phil bobblehead right. or a Todd bobblehead sorry I don't know why I keep saying Phil but there was a Todd bobblehead and with the bobblehead, that is a future reward. And we were like, do we go for that or do we go for today? Today. Because we know that they told us since there have been three days in a row where there were rewards and no vote-offs, tonight there's two vote-offs, one from each team. So do we protect ourselves now or do we worry about the future? And we decided to go for now. Today is someday. <laughs> Today is someday. <laughs> and I think that a lot of people went for the Phil bobblehead. And maybe that's why we won because we made that decision. Or Why do I keep saying Phil? Todd. Bob, sorry, Todd. Uh, Todd bobblehead. And the thing is, is that we went for that. And when we came back, like I was like, we're having to figure out these clues. And some of them were hard. Very, very hard. The one we got tripped up on the most, hopefully they did not show this footage, was the Jimmy Buffett lyrics. Because it says they're posted in a common area. Well, this is all a common area. The other thing that was hard was not reading the map kind of correctly and we were on the wrong side of the RV park so we we're looking for a basketball court but we started on that side and it caused us to have to run more than we were expecting and, and our run. other coach who won um so yeah I think that that was I don't huge. know how much time that used up because no matter what you were gonna have to get to the back and you had to go up the side at least we didn't possibly run through somebody else's site so the thing was, is that um, we had that, you know, with the map, but the Jimmy Buffett song, we were like, which one is it? And we kept finding one and I'm like, I don't think it's that because it, it, the lyrics will fit in the shot. Right. Well, now we've only got a little bit of time before we possibly have to do Our coach is getting exercise. Challenge. So when I see my coach running, it's like you start running. It's like zombie apocalypse. You, you see the coach running, you run. So I think we're going to go fuel up. I mean, we used keto brains this morning to help us with cognitive function, gonna, not even knowing what our challenge was. I'm grabbing a carnivore bar because I do not think that we have a lot of time. No, I think that there was another challenge today. So our biggest fight during the challenge, the scavenger hunt challenge, is finding song lyrics. And I'm like, we're in Margaritaville. And so you get in your head, there's only one way of doing things. Hello, that'll speak in the keto space, right? Only one way. Right there. There is plenty of song lyrics. Look at this, all the way around. There's also song lyrics by the pool. There's lots of common spaces that have song lyrics. And there's many ways to do keto that counts. Okay, we just got back from a competition. I'm exhausted. I don't know how long we have for lunch. So I am just grabbing a carnivore bar, honey salted. Mmm, this is good. I was hungry. We just had coffee this morning with keto brains, but that was it. Happy to be chewing on something at noon. Hoping to fuel up for the next competition cameras crooked but that's okay i i'm i'm crying already this is this is not a fun day we just finished talking to the camera for the show and so i don't know how much of that they're going to show but you know they asked us like who do do we think anybody's lying and who are we going to vote for and and uh, is everything closed yeah and we're talking closed. it's so hard enough but it, 
I mean, my thing is, is this sucks. Yeah. I'm yes. sorry. There's no better way. There's no clean way to say it. This sucks. You know, it's like we busted our butt. Rachel yesterday, like she, she won and we, we got nothing out of it. And I guess that's the game and I'm not upset, you know. We had a personal win. <laughs> we, we had a personal win and that's the most important. She proved something to herself. And then... Today we won. We, but we, we got nothing out of that win. Yeah. And then today we win again. And because we got nothing out of the win yesterday, today's a double elimination. Right. Because they're like, I mean, again, he, we were talking to the, the producer and he's like, the odds of three days in a row, everybody picking that was like 2%. And it happened. But now there's no more giveaway scrolls. And that means... Literally every day someone's getting voted off and and we were doing a calculating we know there's one day of no shooting which means there is six filming days and um eight people to go right to get to two that means that there's two days of double elimination and every other day somebody has to get voted out and so that sucks yeah it does and so we got nothing out of Rachel's win yesterday and then we busted our butt. I mean, my ankle is killing me. I Rachel collapsed. I mean, we busted our butt to win the scavenger hunt and we got nothing out of it. Because I mean, and that was, I, I don't know how much I, I'm happy about the luck of the draw. Choose a key, choose a box. I think Can I just choose a key something. and choose a key and then, you know, or you know, choose a key and then there's one box or I think here, pick a something. box, but like it, it makes it so much harder. You now you only have a 20% chance of winning, 25% chance of winning. But so we picked the right key, the wrong key, but the right box and we got nothing. And they did show us they want to be up and up. Hey, look yeah. what's in this box. Here it is. If you would have picked this key, you would have gotten it, but we got nothing out of it. Now we have to vote somebody off tonight because that challenge today was so physically demanding and I just couldn't do it. Nobody did. Nobody on either team did it. No one won immediately. So we got to go vote somebody off. And, and right now, I mean, my understanding is is there's people gunning for us. I don't know why, but there's can, people gunning for us. And we'll talk about it when we come back from, right. from the vote tonight. But it's, it is hard if you, so we got, but we got to vote for the people who are gunning for us, right? You and people who to, think we think might have an immunity, right? And that's where we're at. Yeah. So, uh, we're about to head over there now, and uh, we'll I let guess you know how it goes. Do the vote, and then we'll come back and and wrap up this day with you. Okay. We are in a really we're tough in a bind. situation. So, we're all pretty sure that Girl Camper has a, an immunity. An immunity. And they're going to play and it. it has now been revealed to us. Don't Our coach, so Stacy, came to us and said that she found out that the way this works is if somebody has an immunity token, they don't have to play it until after all the votes are revealed. Which means I don't like that. I'm just going to say I don't like that. I think they should have to play it ahead of time so that nobody can vote for them or play it before the votes are read because, like... It just, they can keep holding it on to it and holding on to it and holding on to it and holding on to it. So for me, like, that puts us in a predicament. Because so far as we know, everybody is voting for Girl Camper to make that come out. And if everybody is voting for Girl Camper, and we're almost positive Girl Camper is voting for us. So we need to force a tie. So... If that's the case, we don't know what the what happens in that case. If they if they take themselves off, is it the next person with the next amount of votes, or are we going to re-vote? And like, so if it's the next person with votes, that's us because they're going to get four, and then you have us, and we're going home. I asked Todd, and he said I wouldn't worry about this. And I'm like, but this changes how I vote. And he will not tell us what happens if this occurs. So now we have to figure out what should we do? Because the only other option for us would be let the other three teams vote for Girl Camper if they're really voting for Girl Camper. And then we vote for the WAGs, even though we don't want to vote for the WAGs. Or somebody. Vote for somebody. Literally anyone. Anyone. But not because we want them off, but because we want to force a tie. We want to force a tie to protect us. 
and I don't know what to do. Do I trust Todd and not worry? Cause, cause I'm going to, I'm going to be really upset if Todd tells me, do not worry about this. And then you have to worry. And then we find out that. But we got to get back out we're there. We're getting sent home by this. Good morning campers. Good morning. It is. Friday. It's Friday. So day five. Yeah. Okay. But this is actually going with the day four vlog because we got back last last night was an Collapse. emotional night so last night was the first vote off and it was hard like harder than i thought it was going to be super super emotional they prepped us for that but you still can't be prepped for that no <laughs> and um so we talked a little bit in in the last little segment of i thought we were going home i was certain we were going home so what ended up the, to kind of back up because i don't even remember if we said it because it's been so long since it happened and a lot of emotions have happened since then so we had made the decision that we were going to vote for girl camper we also knew that the other teams uh registered nomads the wags and then also matt and mandy were going to vote for them as well because we pretty much all agreed that we were pretty sure they had an immunity. They had like an immunity token. And we were it's, just, it's actually called the camp pass. And a park pass. A park pass. And we were just going to flush it out. We needed to get rid of it because you don't want to run later. But in knowing that we were going to flush it out, we thought that the way that the park pass was going to work was that basically we flushed that out. And they... Don't get voted out. Right. And then they can't, right. But that means that whoever they vote for is the one that's going to And home. that's where we were unclear because we, we kept trying to get an answer of when do you have to play a park pass? Because again, if you look at other shows, sometimes it's before the vote and that means you just can't vote for that person. Um, and you have to say like, hey, I'm playing this. And if that person, nobody was going to vote for him anyway... Oh, well, you've lost your park pass. Sometimes it was after the vote, but before the reading. And again, like you were gambling. I don't, I've always liked that way because that kind of got rid of it. So, you know, they come up and they go, hey, I'm playing this, but they haven't heard the votes. And if they didn't get a vote, it's like, oh, well, you're out of luck. Like it was a right. gamble. That, But we found out that the park pass gets to get played after all of the votes are cast. So then we were like, oh crap, if... And after the reading of the votes. So we were like, oh crap, if that is the case and only their vote is going to count... Which we didn't know. We knew they were going to vote for us. We, we, we didn't know, is it going to be a re-vote? Right. Or is it, okay, the, next, the person with the next amount of votes loses and we knew that that was us because we knew they were going to vote for us and they did vote for us. So what we could have done if you thought that um, it, you could push for a revote would be make it a one, one. So instead of everyone voting for Mary and Lisa, let everybody else vote for Mary and Lisa. We vote for literally anybody else. Then they, then Mary and Lisa would be voting for us. And now you have a one, one. So you, so that would be, that would force a vote. And we talked about that. We talked about like, uh, about possibly going and you could just throwing anybody, a vote to any anybody. of the other teams, whether it be the Nomads or the Wags or Matt and Mandy, not because we wanted to vote them out. And if they see this, it, it had nothing no, to do with wanting to vote you out. Force, it was to force that would be a our... revoke. That was, and, and then we really prayed about it, and we were like, no, we we gave our word of where we were voting. So stick and if that, that means we're going home, that means we're going home. I don't want to. I don't want to write anybody else's name down. We need to just keep winning because I don't want to write down anybody else's name. No. I want to get to the point where everything is in your own hands, and you you have to, you know, you, the last person gets you know eliminated or whatever. Right. I'm hoping that's where it goes. But we made the decision that we're going to vote the way we said we're going to vote because we are not going to lie, even if that means we can't win. And we put it up in God's hand and it and so two things happened. Number one, the girls didn't play an immunity idol. They, yeah. I they, don't know. They didn't play a park pass. They I said don't, they don't have I, it. We I don't know 
if they had something and it just wasn't the park pass well, well, or if they didn't have anything but we don't know i'm gonna say if you guys are watching it because even mary asked like why in the world did you think that we had that mary you asked at the round table at the round table what the very last thing before we voted she asked that's where hey, i freaked that's where i really thought she was like hey what would happen if somebody has a park pass and they like when would that be played like what would it and and then asked who gets voted out and pretty much th what we all believed and what stacy thought kind at the time at the time was well then the person with the next amount of votes is going home well why did she ask that question i, I think she, she i think she knew that she was getting it and part of the thing was is that a lot of us were a little upset that they found the hidden secret and they didn't tell any of us that they found it and they were hiding it and the only reason they ended up kind of coming because they actually came up and said well listen obviously we didn't keep it a secret we have this but it was only after they got called out for finding it not because so they brought it it it, it it created distrust among the team right and if you girls are watching it that was the big thing is yeah it that created distrust that you didn't tell the rest of the team and it was only when you when you got caught that you said, Oh, look what we found and then you were in the things. So, but when asked Mary asked that question, question then now I'm totally Now certain. we're like, Oh my gosh. So she believes she's getting four votes and, and was like, Okay, so whoever we write down goes home and I think they were in shock that we weren't going home. Also something that we found out last night that I'm glad that we know because again, in full disclosure, I would want to share with my we, team our plan was always to come out if we were to get an immunity park pass. We have a we have, we a park. have it. We have a park pass. And Todd said last night after everything, he's like, now that everything is out with the park pass, I can disclose this to you. And that is, if you get a park pass, you are not allowed to tell anybody. anybody. If you tell anybody, the park pass is now null and void. And so I said, can I share it? Like, let's say I'm confident and my teammate I think is going home, can I give it to him? And the answer to that question was no. Right. And so he's like, the only thing you can do is if you get a park pass is to, in the booth when you get it, go, I don't want it. Which at that point, it's kind of silly. You have to, if you go in there, you, you have to assume that the person got it and now, like... Again, not that anybody is going to believe us, but we're not going to lie. Right. And so if we go in and we come out and someone says, did you get the park pass? What we'll probably do is just not answer at all. I know that at this point, nobody is going to see this beforehand, but that that's going to be my plan. So if we if we get the park pass, we can't tell them. So if we don't get it, we can say no. Right. We didn't get it. They may they may not believe us, but if we get it, right. We just won't answer the question. Yeah. We're just gonna move on this way because again, they want us to. They, the, the show wants drama. Right. Right. So they want us to go. No, I didn't get it. I mean, I guess I can go. No, I no, didn't get it. But, I didn't get it. But I don't. I feel like. That would be violating the rules if I did no, I didn't get it. Yeah. So, but we haven't even talked about this. I actually just thought of it. I did, can we be in agreement if we were to win the park pass and someone asks us, just change the subject and do not answer the question at all. Change subject and hopefully they will get it. Understand yeah. where we're going with that. Uh, yeah. That's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and, and get I, that immunity. And I, w let's go ahead and get that. And here's the thing. Now that we know that, you're going to not want to vote. So if, if you know somebody has a park pass, especially within our team, you're not going to want to vote for that person because that person now has all the power. Now that we know that, like we were trying to flush it out, right? Just flush it out. But now that you know that that person has the sole power, you flush it out. They're going to vote for you. I, I you mean, don't know who they're going to vote yeah, for. Yeah. So now it's like if I if if we were to win a park pass today, I don't want anybody I'm, to play it because I'm saving they it get, to the end. Yeah, because you don't want them to play it until unless there's a rule of when it has to be played. 
I'm saving it to the end at this point. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm assuming today is a single elimination day because there is the changing lanes pass that is in play. And, and that really doesn't mean anything until the teams are uneven. And right now the teams are even. It can't yeah. be played when the teams are even. So I think that today is a single elimination. We're going to try our hardest for our team. Yeah. I'm hurting today. And then I'm also hurting emotionally today. So, like, we're just going to do our best. We're going to try to win as a team so we don't have to send anybody home. Well, and I think that this also plays a little bit on past hurt. If you've ever been rejected in your life, and we've experienced a lot of rejection over the years because of, you know, disabilities, the way that we looked, our own... <coughs> you know, lack of self-confidence, um, being told there's no place for you at the lunch table. When you see your name written down um, for it, someone like us, it sucked. It really, it, it hurts your feelings and it makes you want to do what you did in the past and that is retreat into isolation and don't put yourself out there, but we can't do this. This is a team game. So just because our names were on that piece of paper, we got to come back and, and believe the best that like the rest of the team doesn't feel that way mm -hmm. and like just go all in. And we don't know where everybody lies. Right. We don't know where everybody lies. I think that I think the four teams left here. I think we're pretty strong and we're cohesive. And I don't think any of us want to write anybody else's name down. Now, listen, we came into this. Odds of winning are small. They're one in ten. Yeah. And, and I don't think I, I. We may be good at some things. We're not good at other things. I don't think social game is definitely my strong point. It's definitely my son's strong point. Like if Anthony was here, what? he's got the social game. He I should have played with Anthony. But he ain't here. Um, or you should have played with Anthony because I don't have the social game. Um, but we came into this going. We won because we're here. Right. And I truly believe we won because we're here. The fact that we got to be here and try this, that to me was like that's all I needed. I had one goal, don't go out first. Yeah. So I So any anything we get past today is icing on the cake. Is icing on the cake and if we get voted out tonight or tomorrow night, I will sit by that campfire and I will hang out with everybody because I made friends here and I'm excited and and I love the fact that when you get voted out and unplugged, you have one more night because you don't have to go home till the next day. Yeah, and so and 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 our and I want to go camping with all of these people. And like I, when this is over, I want to meet up with the Wags and meet up with the Nomads. I want to meet up with Mary. We yes. go to Omaha every year. Mary, Lisa, I, I want to I want to meet up with you guys. Yeah, and 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 let you, you know, know that we're for real. You know that we're 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 not like mean game players or anything like that so yeah i'm excited and we bleed red so i definitely want red team to win no matter what i'm gonna tell you i want this team on the red team of course to win but we just want red team to win okay so day four starts off on a positive note we get up super early in the morning and we have a scavenger hunt and we had a very odd strategy we did which was stay back, kind of hang back. Don't like run into this like a chicken with our head cut off like we normally do in our real life, Joe. We actually decided to pivot, calm down, and not do something in a hurry. And I think that that's definitely something that we need to bring into our life here at home. Well, so here's the thing is that going into that challenge, there were really two challenges, right? So you had the scavenger hunt, mm -hmm where you were playing for the key token. Right. Then you had the search for the Phil bobblehead doll. You mean or the Todd, Todd. bobblehead. I, even now I'm still saying it. You said it during- During the whole show. I mean, it's in that behind the scenes footage. You call Todd Phil almost every time. So you're playing for the Todd bobblehead for which we do not know- Where is it? What, where is it or what does it do? So we immediately had to make the decision, do we play the scavenger hunt or we go for the doll? Because I felt like you would not be able to complete both. No. And we opted to go for the scavenger hunt thinking that everybody's going to look for that doll. Thinking well, like that's an immunity. Exactly. I definitely- Which it was. We thought that it would be an important detail. And also, um, that is a very 
big Easter egg to look for in a very large park. As you could see from watching that episode, the campus of it's Camp huge. Margaritaville, Ar Auburndale, is absolutely huge. And I was really thankful, you know, on the other side of that challenge, after I was done being ticked off for all the running, um, it has a lot of amenities. And I was glad to have eyes on it. It was nice to see where everything was, but... We decided not to go for the Todd bobblehead. We ran for the actual scavenger hunt, and we had this strategy of, like, you can't really tell from the camera angles where our camp was compared to Camp Margaritaville. But it was a good thousand yards. Far. Okay, because we're all the way down. You got to go all the way out and then over. And so it, it was... I, at least 700 to 1,000 yards. And everybody took off bolting. And I knew that, like, you're only going to have so much endurance. Neither one of us are runners. I mean, I have a friend named Jonathan Shane. He's an ultra-distance runner. He does 100-mile marathons. So he'd be fine all day. But the thing is, is if you bolt, now you're gassed before you even start. And we felt like, let everybody get to, we knew a lot of stuff was going to be in the camp store right off the bat. But kind of like pay attention from the outside and then you kind of get an idea where things are and then conserve your energy to go from one to the other. And it it did pay off. Yes, because I did not have a lot of gas in the tank for running, as you can tell from watching the episode. So the fact that I had what I needed to in reserve, um, I will say that I was honestly surprised because of the thought that I'm not a runner, I'm not quick, and we did sort of take our time um, and calm down, which was good because you couldn't like cross over into other people's campsites. Yeah, you had to follow like pretty much campsite etiquette. You could not go into another campsite. So you had to follow the paths and sidewalks and streets. We had to stay calm in order to not disqualify ourselves by doing something dumb. And, and you also had to have both of you in every picture. So you had to find the thing and then both of you take the picture with it. Right. So it's not like you could just run ahead to the next one. You had to wait anyway. You had to wait anyway. So you could only go as fast as the pace of your partner and sorry about your luck, but you're stuck with me. So definitely the pace was an issue and I'm glad we had, you know, the steam that we needed for the finish line. But I was honestly surprised that we were first. We even beat Phil and Stacy, and that, that really, really surprised me. It, it was a really fun challenge. It, it, it was. definitely was proof to ourselves that we could do something like that, especially as people had pointed out in the comments section during the airing, like I was in a wheelchair and here I am running. And yes, I am a high school official, but that high school official is sprinting. Right. It's very short as a football official or a lacrosse official. It's not like a constant up and down. Like as a lacrosse official, you may have to run down for a fast break, but then you're in a settled situation. So it's walking slash running. Same thing with football. It's it's not like a constant running. It's little, it's breaks in between. So that that made it a little bit more challenge. And then also as an official, you're on grass and turf. And this was running on concrete with pins in your ankle concrete. and a 30 year old injury definitely impacts things. So we win. And they only briefly showed it. We go to the key room and we don't get anything. Nothing. Two so, days in a row. Right. So we have, you have two keys. We in, had two keys. They changed situation. it every time. Two keys, two boxes. You have to choose a key. You have to choose a box. Try to open the key, um, open the box rather with that key. We had no luck. So we choose, chose the wrong combination and we were not able to actually open a box. And if I remember right, I know we said it in there, but- so you had two keys, two boxes. So you really only have a 25% chance after you get into that key room. And there were times where it was one key, three boxes. It would change all the time. So we chose the right key, but the wrong box. Right. And they did show us, like he took the key and he opened up the box and said, if it you works. would have chose this box, yeah, like you would have gotten it. So two weeks in a row, we went a challenge and... We got nothing. Did you worry at all that people would not believe that we got nothing? Well, yeah, we talked about that. And so even back on the scavenger hunt, there we had thought about, like, do we really want to win this? Because we knew you would put a target on your head if you won it. And also, um, we got into a little bit of a, a tiff 
during about, that scavenger hunt. About one of the the things that we had to find during the scavenger hunt was a song lyric. We did not know at the time that it could be any song yeah. lyric around the Margaritaville Auburndale campus. We thought it needed to be the right one. I'm just glad they didn't catch that as Todd and Tony said during the after show. He's like, oh, if you would have told us that, we would have made you recreate it. I'm like, no, I was never going to recreate that. Thank goodness the cameras missed it. Right, because there it was wasn't pretty. some choice words that were swapped between uh, married folk. Um, but it was any any song lyric. So right. we. It, it's funny because I like finding a life lesson in these moments. And one of them is like, we were in that moment, like missing the forest for the trees, right? Like we were definitely like majoring in the minors in that moment because yeah. we were so fixated on finding the right song lyric that we were wasting time. And then the hamster wheel to not make this too long, like just watching reliving that, that was not a good time. It was horrible. We didn't Oof. talk about it much in, in our, you know, uh, our, thoughts during the show but it was horrible it was pretty much impossible if you could have willed yourself it was to so do it. hot i thought i was gonna have it because what again we went towards the end and i was like well if you go to the other side but you got so gas so quickly and it wouldn't move and there's like a pool noodle that is tied to it that's going down a rope so it doesn't go away and that made it not be able to move very quickly and it would pull you and turn you around but looking back you know, now I don't mind that because obviously all you did was win immunity for that night, which would have been nice. We turned out we didn't need anyway. Right. But I mean, I, I'm sure that everybody thought to themselves, gosh, that would be nice because it, it was an be. instant immunity. It wasn't a case of a chance for right. immunity. But, you know, again, you don't, you only know now, but I right. look back back then, like, you know, yeah, it would have been nice to have it. I'd rather have an immunity token that I can use whenever, but that was literally only for tonight. It's only for tonight. It was nice, the proximity. I know it was a super frustrating challenge for everybody. Nobody actually Nobody met the requirements, but it was a beautiful um, view from the sidelines because we were so close on the bank of, of that lake to whoever was the contestant that was representing Red Team at the time. And... We were trying to make sure they could hear us, yeah. right? Everybody was cheering. Because you couldn't see where you were going. No, and we were cheering for one another. And that was a really beautiful moment because our team really was together cheering everybody on. I remember the moment that Matt's leg came um, undone and fell off. And I was really concerned and worried for him. Um, I really admired watching Matt and Mandy's relationship through this entire um, game because her stance really was, I want to fully support my husband if he believes that he is up to the task. If he wants to take yeah. on this challenge for himself, I am not going to say no to him. I am going to support him and I'm going to cheer him. And if he does hurt himself, we will handle that situation then, but we are to the best of our ability going to try. And if he says he wants to try, I'm going to support him. And I thought that was amazing. Yeah. So let's get into the vote. Yes. So it's come out. There were alliances. We did not know this. No, we did not. Clearly. Now, I suspected that something was going on mm -hmm. just because of things happening we were under the impression because we were told um, that Girl Camper didn't like me. I am glad that that is absolutely positively untrue, not yeah. true. They yeah. like you. But at the time, right? we were told they didn't like me and that they were voting for us because of that. And so we had made this decision. We were going to vote for Girl Camper. Then we also had the situation that they had found the key token to go in mm -hmm. again nobody knows did they get anything or not what if they got anything or what happens with that key token so i think that what happened as we said in you know our behind the scenes some people felt that they should have told them they had it mm -hmm. and they kind of lied about it until they got caught and that's when they were like i guess we didn't like keep this a secret very well so i think they felt betrayed 
which is why you had what went down go down. But we were always going to vote for them. We weren't in an alliance. It just kind of worked out. At the last second, mm -hmm. people came to us and said, hey, this is who we're going to vote. But that's why we were talking about, like, maybe we shouldn't do that because if they do have one, and again, not knowing what is the result of that token, if they get to play it, that means we're going to go home because they're going to vote for us and everybody else is going to vote for them. So maybe we should have a tie. So they vote for us. We vote for somebody else. You have a 2-2 tie and now whatever the tiebreaker is. Because definitely that another layer was the token because of the fact that like right before we go to the vote, Mary actually asked, hey, what happens when you That's play the token. That's why everybody thought they had one. So that kind of so made like, why me would think, you ask that question? Like, how do I? How would one play the token? That's what what she asked. So when she asked that, I thought, oh, they have the token. So it felt like it was a double reason, um, not just because of how they may or may not have viewed you, but also thinking, oh, they have an immunity token. And that's why I say when we go into the into uh, the laundry room, and I'm like, this may come back to bite me in the butt because we decided. We're going to vote because we did at the last second when everybody said we're going to vote for Mary and Lisa, we said, okay, we're going to do the same thing because, again, we thought that people were going to vote for us. So if you're all saying that, maybe they're all just lying to us. Mm -hmm. um, but if they would have had a token, there's a chance we would have gone home. Right. So, you know, it, it definitely was interesting. We definitely skated by that one. But what did you think when you saw your name on that paper? Sad. It, 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 it's, it's, it's not a nice feeling. And and again, these are people that are new to your life. So it's not something that you should hold somebody accountable to writing your name down on a piece of paper and voting you off as if it's like my family just like threw me out of the family. Like that that is not the level that 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 it is, right? Like that's not the reality of what it is. This is a game. They have to vote somebody off. I don't want to be the person who writes my own name down or draws well, we had straws. said that like, we were never going to do that. So the, the, I didn't the, want that. In season one, if you didn't see, the, the blue team was deciding who goes home by drawing straws. I and, didn't want that. And you would write down your own name. Now, the producers did tell us this year there was no drawing straws allowed. You weren't allowed to do that. And there was no way I was ever writing my name down. No, and I don't think that, honestly, that that guarantees, like, that you wouldn't still have some hurt feelings, right? So if I draw a straw, but... I I'm like, hey, I drew the straw guys, but like everybody knows I'm doing really well. Please still don't write my name down. Like, I feel like it's not necessarily there's any good, there's any way that you're not going to be sad yeah. that that you go home. I looked at it like, again, as we've said, there's 10 teams. Only right. one can win. We kind of had this feeling that, like, listen, odds are we're not gonna win. We're not the strongest. Um, you know, we're not the most likable, we're loud, um, we can tend to really talk, a lot. talk, you know, a lot and we definitely present our opinions, but we also looked at it as we got to be there. And so I had one thing, I didn't want to be the last team picked to get on a team, which we weren't, we which actually chose our own by doing everyone a Everyone avoided that. And I didn't want to be the first team to go home. So at that point, after this vote... I was like, I'm good. I didn't want to go home on day one, but this was now day three, day four. Which is so nice. I just didn't want to go home first, which we obviously didn't. But other than that, I felt like we won. So if somebody voted us off, we adopted the attitude of we had a good time. I, not, I had a great time, mm -hmm. and I would definitely go back. And I won just getting to participate. And I think that it helped. You know, we did. We wrote had to write somebody else's name down. Which that sucked. felt really awful to do. But then when you saw they also were writing your name down, so it was like okay, it felt like all right, clean slate. You know, you wrote my name down, I wrote your name down. Like we good, right. you know. And that's and that's how I I felt about that. As we say, gosh, I just didn't want to be the first ones to go home. You have to acknowledge that somebody does have to somebody be the first, to be the first one. one, and I am home. sorry. That Le Lisa and Mary had to experience that because yeah. I think nobody wants to experience that. But at that. least it didn't happen on day one like you would have on Survivor, like literally on day one. And they are, were great contenders. So the episode ended on a cliffhanger. Yes. Next week we get to find out what happened with the blue team. Because it is a double, double elimination. elimination. So we will be back next week. 
uh, with the wrap up of day five. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, please do us a favor, hit that like button down below. That does two things. Number one, it really does uh, let us know what kind of videos you guys are looking to see, but more importantly, it does really help build the channel and we greatly appreciate that. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also the bell button and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to Till it. Till next time, happy, happy camping. camping. Thank you.